Welcome to the IT Free Training video looking at Hyper-V first and second generation virtual machines. The second generation virtual machine uses modern virtual hardware, however only supports a small number of operating systems. This video will look at the difference between the first and second generation virtual machines and what requirements there are to use second generation virtual machines. To start with, consider a basic definition of emulation. This is hardware or software that duplicates functions of one computer system on another system. For example, consider that you have an application. The application wants to display some graphics, so it uses a physical graphics card, usually through a device driver to access the monitor. When you use virtual machines, the hardware is emulated. When you have this occur, you have the application accessing emulated hardware to access physical resources like the monitor. The application does not know the difference. This is the biggest advantage of using virtualization in that it separates the virtual machine from the hardware. This makes it an easy process to move a virtual machine from one computer to another. The fundamental difference between first generation and second generation is the underlying hardware that is used in the virtual machine. In some cases, this hardware has been replaced completely by software, eliminating the need to emulate hardware. This should improve the performance of the virtual machine, but unfortunately, Microsoft states that most of these improvements are seen in startup and installation, and the general performance improvements in other areas are small. In order to use second generation virtual machines, you require Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows 8.1. On these operating systems, you can still run first generation virtual machines if you choose to, or a combination of both. You essentially have the choice of which virtual machine that you want to run. When you create a virtual machine using the new virtual machine wizard as shown, you will be asked which generation of virtual machine you want to create. The option you choose determines the virtual hardware that will be used with the virtual machine. Once selected, this cannot be changed later on. For guest operating system support, for the server operating system, you need to use Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2. For client operating systems, Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 are supported. The operating system has to be 64-bit. In a moment, we will see why. When second generation was first released, Microsoft was still working on Linux support. If you plan to use Linux, check the distribution to see if it is supported and make sure you have applied all the available Hyper-V updates from Windows Update. You may also need to disable Secure Boot. Secure Boot is a system that checks all the software used in the boot process to make sure it is from a trusted manufacturer. The idea being that an attacker will not be able to modify software used in the boot process without this being detected. Due to the open source nature of Linux, the distribution may not be recognized by Secure Boot and thus cannot be booted from until Secure Boot is disabled. Since the hardware used in first and second generation has changed, it is a good idea to look at how it has changed. The first change is the legacy BIOS has changed to UEFI firmware. This is one of the major reasons second generation requires a 64-bit CPU. Although it is possible to use UEFI on 32-bit systems, in most cases when UEFI is used, it will be used with a 64-bit system. I would guess Microsoft's logic here is if you need 32-bit, use first generation which is supported quite well with the legacy BIOS option. The next change is the IDE controller has been removed. The SCSI controller is still available and has been improved. The SCSI controller is available in first generation but does not support booting. Now with second generation, booting the operating system is supported. The next change is that second generation does not support the VHD format. The VHD format, used for virtual hard disks, supports virtual disks up to 2040 gigabytes. In order to use second generation virtual machines, the VHDX format needs to be used. This supports drives up to 64 terabytes and allows the virtual disk to be resized while it is in use. If you plan to use second generation virtual machines, Microsoft recommends using GPT for the partition table, 
although MBR is supported. The next change is IDE CD-ROM is not supported. As with IDE virtual disks, support is available using the SCSI controller. There is support for four SCSI controllers, with each SCSI controller being able to hold 64 devices, making a total of 256 devices per virtual machine. The next change is the legacy network adapter has been removed. Previously, the legacy network adapter was used in order to support booting from the network. With second generation, booting is supported from the network using the synthetic network adapter. Synthetic refers to the fact that the network adapter is completely software based, not emulated. In first generation, there were two network adapter types. The legacy option supports booting from the network, while the standard network adapter did not. This was a bit confusing and caused some problems to the network administrator. However, now there is only one network adapter to choose from which supports everything. The next change is that the floppy controller is not supported. Floppy disks are quite old technology nowadays and most people use USB flash drives. Hyper-V does support a technology called Enhanced Session Mode which allows a USB flash drive to be used on a virtual machine. This should allow the administrator to transport files to and from the virtual machine if removable media is required. The next change is that PS2 keyboard and mouse have been changed to software based. The advantage of this is that it uses less resources. If you plan to install Windows 8 or Windows Server 2012, this can cause problems. The version of Windows PE which is used to install these versions of Windows does not support the software based keyboard driver. However, the mouse is fine. If you install Windows 8.1 or Windows Server 2012 R2, the version of Windows PE that is shipped with this version of Windows supports it. The biggest issue you will have with installing Windows 8 or Windows Server 2012 is not being able to enter in the product key when prompted without keyboard support. There are a few workarounds for this. The easiest one, in my opinion, is to boot off a newer version of Windows PE and then change disks and run the setup manually. The next change is that the S3 video is now software based. This uses less resources and also means that hardware emulation is not required to display the video. You will notice that the last three options are no longer required. The PCI bus is used to communicate with devices that use the PCI bus. Since all the hardware in second generation does not require the PCI bus, this is no longer required. The PIC or Programmable Interrupt Controller and PIT or Programmable Interval Timer are both used for timing on the computer. The PIC was replaced by the Advanced Programmable Interrupt Controller. However, in Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008, they still require the PIC. This is the biggest reason why these operating systems cannot be used in second generation virtual machines. The PIT dates back to the DOS days and is simply not needed in second generation virtual machines. Super I.O. device is used for connections of low speed devices. Keyboards, serial ports, USB all fall into this category. These functions are no longer required as other systems now perform these roles. To recap what was covered in this video, in order to run second generation virtual machines, you need to be using Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows 8.1. The guest operation system or operating system running in the virtual machine needs to be Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. Due to hardware compatibility issues, if you install Windows Server 2012 or Windows 8, you may need to perform a workaround to get the keyboard to work during the install. If you are running Linux, you may need to disable Secure Boot. Disabling Secure Boot is a simple matter of clearing a tick box. In theory, second generation virtual machines should give some speed improvements, but Microsoft has stated in day-to-day -day running, these speed improvements will be small and seen mostly in startup and installation of the virtual machines. For this reason, I would say that there is not too much urgency to upgrade to second generation virtual machines. If you are not sure, you can always keep using first generation virtual machines as both can be run at the same time on the same server. Well, I hope that you have found this video from IT Free Training informative and helpful. 
I hope to see you in other free videos from us on this topic and others. Until then, thanks for watching.